Hello, all you freedom-loving people. Welcome to another episode of Front Page. I'm your host, Scott Cameron Goulet. It's Easter Monday, and I hope everyone had a wonderful and traditional Easter weekend. The White House's declaration of the traditional religious holiday as Transgender Day of Visibility drew condemnation from conservatives and even from transgender people who are not buying whatever Biden is selling. Illegal migrant influencer Lionel Marino has finally been arrested. His story is a reflection of two problems that are currently plaguing the population, illegal immigrants and squatters. The state of Florida has enacted a law to stop illegal squatters from occupying people's property. The problem of the flood of illegal immigrants may have to be solved by the new administration. And a judge blocked the Biden administration's attempt to expand lending rules. And we end today's show with a miraculous story. Okay, let's get into it. Biden issued an official proclamation on Good Friday declaring that Easter Sunday this year will be Transgender Day of Visibility. The Easter Egg Art Contest is part of the White House Easter tradition. This includes the annual Easter Egg Roll. But this year, the White House issued instructions for the Easter Egg Children's Art and Design Contest to prohibit submissions with religious symbols or overtly religious themes. These moves by President Biden in the White House have sparked strong criticism from conservatives, including the Trump campaign. Trump campaign spokeswoman Carolyn Leavitt said in a statement on Saturday, sadly, these are just two more examples of the Biden administration's year-long assault on the Christian faith. We call on Joe Biden's failing campaign and White House to issue an apology to the millions of Catholics and Christians across America who believe tomorrow is for one celebration only, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. March 31st coincides with Easter Sunday, which is the most important Christian holiday. But the White House chose this day as Transgender Day of Visibility. This clearly violates the founding principles of freedom of worship. Actor and producer Kevin Sorbo, who has 1.9 million followers on X, said in a post, Easter Sunday is being replaced. Our Catholic president banned religious imagery from the White House and is now calling Easter Sunday Transgender Day of Visibility. Harmeet K. Dillon, the vice president of the Republican National Lawyers Association, wrote to deliberately insult Christians on this holy weekend is gross and evil. Speaker Mike Johnson posted on Saturday, the Biden White House has betrayed the central tenet of Easter, which is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Even some transgenders have expressed their opposition to the White House's actions. Former Olympic decathlon gold medalist and transgender Bruce Jenner, who now goes by Caitlyn Jenner, wrote on social media, I am absolutely disgusted that Joe Biden has declared the most holy of holy days a self-proclaimed devout Catholic as transgender day of visibility. The only thing you should be declaring on this day is he is risen. It's fortunate that the Easter celebrations in civil society were not affected. On Sunday, Manhattan's Fifth Avenue was home to the annual Easter Parade and Bonnet Festival. This historic event dates back to the 1870s. It attracts countless New Yorkers and tourists each year in classic, modern, and glamorous hats. These hats range from the humble and elegant to the bizarre. People can be as creative as they like, and they can make their own unique hats for this festival. On Friday, President Trump and eight co-defendants filed a legal document asking the Georgia Court of Appeals to disbar District Attorney Fannie Willis. They are dissatisfied with Fulton County Superior Court Judge Scott McAfee's decision to allow Fannie Willis to proceed with the case. President Trump's defense attorney Steve Sadow said in a statement that McAfee should have dismissed the indictment outright or at the very least disqualified Willis and her office from prosecuting the case. The defendants argue that the judge correctly ruled against Willis for hiring her paramour and then accepting gifts and trips financed by her paramour, the lead prosecutor, but they fault the judge for failing to require Willis to recuse herself. They argue that this was a clear error of law that should be reversed. The Court of Appeals has 45 days to decide whether to take up the issue. McAfee said that he will continue to press the case during the appeal 
If the Court of Appeals accepts the case, then President Trump could seek a stay of the proceedings during the appeal. Illegal migrant influencer Lionel Marino, who mocked America on social media in several viral videos, was nabbed by federal immigration authorities in Columbus, Ohio on Friday. Lionel Marino is from Venezuela. He continues to teach other immigrants how to take advantage of legal loopholes to make money in the U.S., including squatting in the homes of American citizens and collecting welfare without working. Because of his content, he has attracted a large following on TikTok. As of this month, he has more than 500,000 followers on social media. Marino has urged his fans to take advantage of U.S. laws that support illegal squatters to commandeer vacant homes. Last week, two days before his arrest, he took to social media to mock American taxpayers on Instagram. He bragged about his easy money. He claimed on TikTok that in the U.S., he and his family receive $350 a week in government assistance, and he earns up to $1,000 a week on TikTok. He has been known to wave a stack of $100 bills in front of the camera, claiming that he has enough money to protect himself, his wife, and his children for at least 18 months without having to work. Sometimes he even holds a baby in his arms and sings while showing off his cash. In a series of videos released, he bragged about not having to work as he flaunted his piles of cash. He also mocks fellow immigrants who come to the U.S. to work in cleaning, construction, and gardening. Marino said in one Instagram clip, I didn't cross the Rio Grande to work like a slave. I came to the U.S. to mark my territory. Marino entered the country illegally from Eagle Pass, Texas in early 2022, and he escaped U.S. Immigration and Custom Enforcement shortly thereafter. Squatters are a nightmare for landlords. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed a bill last week to protect the rights of homeowners in Florida against so-called squatters. DeSantis posted a video on X explaining the need for the new law. Does your house belong to you? Or if you are not using it, can someone just come in, squat for a period of time, and then claim that they have a right to be there? This so-called squatter scam is something that's happening around the country. There's even videos telling people how to go in and take over an empty house. Uh, that was never how the law was supposed to work. Uh, and in Florida, uh, we are gonna take action today to end this scam and to protect the private property rights of our homeowners. The bill would expose squatters to criminal charges and allow homeowners to submit an affidavit that they legally own the property. If squatters are unable to produce documentation from the homeowner authorizing their occupancy, then the homeowner can now request that the police evict them immediately. Squatters who damage a home will be charged with a second degree felony, and those who fraudulently sell or rent a property will be charged with a first degree felony. The law will take effect on July 1st, DeSantis said that he believes Florida is the first state in the nation to address the squatter scam up front. Previously, squatters were considered tenants in every state in the United States. The legal owner of a home had to initiate a lengthy court case in order to legally evict squatters from their home. Earlier this month, a New York State woman returned to a property that she inherited to find unauthorized squatters living there. She changed the locks to kick them out which resulted in New York state authorities arresting her, not the squatters. The incident was exposed by the media and sparked public concern. New York landlords rallied to protest the squatter scam. They criticized the lengthy housing litigation process that overwhelms homeowners. Homeowners who live in states other than Florida are thinking of ways to evict squatters. In California, there is a squatter hunter, Flash Shelton. He specializes in this matter. He has created tactics for evicting squatters from illegally occupied homes. In 2019, Shelton's father passed away. His mother tried to sell a home in Northern California, but the house was occupied by a group of strangers who broke in through the back door. She contacted the police, but the police were unable to do anything. Shelton asked his mother to sign a real lease for him. As a tenant, he entered the house when the occupants were not there. 
He then installed a camera, he locked the back door, and he moved the occupant's belongings into the front driveway. Shelton then used his real lease to contest the other party's fake lease. He succeeded in taking back the house. Last January, he put his experience on YouTube and it became a sensation. After he gained media attention, many people contacted him for help. Shelton assembled a team and he worked with law enforcement to turn his experience into a proven strategy. Shelton believes that it is the government's problems that have triggered the increase in the number of squatters. That's why he started a petition on the change.org website to criminalize home invasion. It appears that President Biden attended a fundraiser with former President Barack Obama and Bill Clinton at Radio City Music Hall in New York City the day before Good Friday. The Biden team announced that they have raised more than $25 million, which is a record high and more than President Trump raised in the entire month of February. Trump campaign spokesperson Steve Chung criticized the pompous fundraiser on his ex account. The event was attended by elite celebrity donors who are out of touch with real life. NBC News mentioned that the guests were allowed to take photos with Biden, Obama and Clinton for $100,000. On the other hand, President Trump attended a funeral wake for a fallen police officer, Jonathan Diller in New York on the same day in order to advocate for a return to law and order. However, while the influx of money has given Biden and his Democrats a huge cash advantage, Biden clearly needs it. President Trump's distinctive personality and his encounters have earned him nearly unlimited free media attention. Meanwhile, Biden, despite his presidency, has often struggled to get his message across above all the praise for President Trump. That means that Biden will need a lot of cash to cover the battleground states. In addition, Biden faces the challenge of reaching millennials and younger voters who are an important part of Biden's 2020 campaign coalition. That's why his campaign is trying to make significant early investments on the ground and on the airwaves. The Biden campaign has opened 100 new field offices nationwide, and they have increased the number of paid staff in the battleground states to 350. The campaign is also currently running a $30 million television and digital advertising campaign targeting specific groups such as black, Hispanic, and Asian voters. But the Trump team doesn't recognize that Biden is better funded. They rely on policy, not money. Trump's anti-illegal immigrant message appears to be resonating with key elements of the Democratic coalition that Biden will need to win over this November. A recent Associated Press poll shows that about two-thirds of Americans now disapprove of the way Biden is handling border security, including about 4 in 10 Democrats, 55% of black adults, and 73% of Hispanic adults. A recent Pew Research Center poll showed that 45% of Americans described the border situation as a crisis, while another 32% see it as a big problem. On Friday, a federal judge found that the Biden administration's interpretation diverged from the law. U.S. District Judge Matthew Kaczmarek ruled on March 29th that the new rules, which were due to take effect on April 1st, are based on incorrect interpretations of federal law. Based on the Community Reinvestment Act, current rules require banks and other lenders to provide services to low and moderate income people in the local community. The expanded rules by the Biden administration broaden the definition of community to include individuals with whom the lenders do business. The Biden administration alleged that the word entire before community in the law necessitates a fresh examination of the statute. This prompted the new rules. However, Judge Kaczmarek wrote in his ruling, true, the word entire should not be read out of the statute, but it does not have the effect defendants attribute to it. In modifying community, the word entire merely clarifies the whole community must be served. It does not change what a community is. 
if a statutory community is created around every individual customer with whom a bank does business, regardless of whether that customer is within the geography of the bank's physical presence, the term becomes meaningless and the statute ineffectual. The judge also said that the section of the new rules that authorizes federal banking agencies to access deposits instead of only credit activity was based on an incorrect reading of the law. The recent case was filed in Amarillo, where Judge Kazmarek serves as the sole active judge. Judge Kazmarek has gained attention recently for entering nationwide injunctions against the policies of the Biden administration. This includes the approval of an abortion pill. The approval of the abortion pill is currently under consideration by the U.S. Supreme Court. AT&T confirmed on Saturday that the personal information of about 73 million current and former customers was leaked on the dark web about two weeks ago. Former AT&T customers are the most affected. Preliminary analysis shows that 65.4 million former customers and 7.6 million current customers are affected. The company said that the leaked data included personal information such as social security numbers. The data appears to be from 2019 or earlier. Other information that was leaked include customer passcodes, names, email addresses, residential addresses, phone numbers, and dates of birth. In response, AT&T has reset the passcodes for the 7.6 million current account holders who were affected. AT&T is currently investigating to determine if the data came directly from AT&T or through one of their vendors. However, AT&T has stated that there's no evidence to suggest an unauthorized breach of their systems leading to the leak. The company also emphasized that this incident has not had a material impact on their operations. They did not claim responsibility for the leak and they appear only to be concerned about their own operations. The U.S. Department of Commerce announced on Friday that the core PCE price index, which is a key inflation measure, rose 2.8% year-on-year in February. This is in line with expectations. Market observers expect the Fed to cut interest rates in June. As interest rates fall, gold becomes more attractive. In the Asian session on Monday, the spot gold price continued its upward trend. It rose to about $2,250 per ounce for the first time in history. No data is yet available for the London Metal Exchange, which cl- was closed on Monday for Easter. They will resume trading on Tuesday. Joseph Cavatoni, a market strategist at the World Gold Council, told CNBC on Monday, I think it's a really exciting moment in gold. What's really driving it is, I think, many market speculators really getting that confidence and comfort in the Fed cuts. If you're a chocolate lover, you may be alarmed to find that the price of your favorite dessert has gone up and will continue to go up. That's because the price of cocoa beans, the raw material used to make chocolate, continues to rise. This is because West Africa, one of the world's largest producers of cocoa beans, has suffered a poor harvest over the past 12 months due to bad weather and crop diseases. The price of cocoa beans surged 60% this month. Cocoa futures were trading at a record high of more than $10,000 per metric ton in New York on Tuesday after rising more than 60% from the previous year. Cocoa prices are even higher than that of the industrial metal copper. A few months ago, this price was considered unimaginable. Wells Fargo said in a report, it's likely consumers will see a price spike on chocolate candy this Easter. Higher cocoa prices will lead to higher chocolate costs throughout the year. If cocoa tree disease and bad weather continues, chocolate could be more expensive at Easter in 2025. Easter is a time to witness miracles. A yoga practitioner in the Indian state of Himachal Pradesh recently meditated in the Himalayas wearing only very thin clothes. Snowflakes fell from the sky, causing a layer of snow to pile up on his body making him look like a snow sculpture. It looks like a fake or artificial intelligence produced image, but it's real. A spiritual organization in Himachal Pradesh has issued a statement saying that the footage is authentic. The practitioner in the image is Nath, Satyanda Nath. 
He has been associated with the organization for a long time. He has been practicing meditation in the Himalayas for more than two decades. The footage was taken by Nath's disciple Raoul. Raoul was accompanying Nath to the site where he was meditating. It was in the month of February. Nath, along with a few disciples, including Raoul, went to Siraj Valley in Kulu for a month's retreat. When a snowstorm hit one day, Raoul, along with another disciple of Nath, wanted to go and warn Nath. When they reached the place where Nath was meditating, they found him already in a state of deep meditation in the snow-covered mountains, so they decided to film him meditating. In fact, there are many practices, not limited to Indian yoga, that are able to achieve more than the average person can handle through meditation. What seems amazing to us may seem like a daily routine to practitioners of meditation. And that's a wrap for this episode. Thank you so much for your support of Front Page. Please remember that every like, comment, and share helps more people to see the truth. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And if you have already subscribed, we thank you, but please double check to make sure that you're still subscribed because some of our audience have reported that they're somehow unsubscribed without their knowledge. We've also heard that many of you don't get notifications of our videos anymore on YouTube. So when you do subscribe on YouTube, please make sure to tap the notification bell as well. Okay, this is our show for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like what you heard today, please don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends and family because everybody deserves to know the truth. Again, thank you for watching Front Page and we will see you next time.